What are you still salty about? In elementary school, there was a pencil machine in the front lobby where you could get pencils for 25 cents. There were also special pencils that had stars on them. If you got one of these special pencils, you could take it into the office and get a prize. One day, I decided to get a pencil. I put in my quarter and out popped two pencils. And one of them was a special pencil. I went into the office and told the lady at the desk that the machine gave me two pencils and one of them was special. She proceeded to say that the machine shouldn't do that, took the special pencil and didn't give me a prize. That was 19 years ago and I'm still mad. Some people in petty power positions are truly a disgrace for humankind and probably will ultimately be the ones to blame for the diminishing of our entire race. I love how this comment is about a pencil. The fact that I spelled mayonnaise correctly in my 4th grade class spelling B, but the teacher claimed I didn't and dismissed me. I had one in the 3rd grade and proceeded to win in the 5th and 6th grades as well. The unfair disqualification in 4th grade ruined what would have been a 4 year streak. Before I knew English I had a teacher tell me that my name is spelled with a Y when it's extremely obvious that it's spelled with an I. Of course I didn't know better, so I didn't say anything but it seems really stupid that she thought that, since she was born in Australia I think. My mom told me she was wrong, but to me, it was her word against her word. That's just not how names work. Even if you were called Ryan which is normally spelled with a Y it's up to your parents to decide. That my 6th grade teacher refused to believe I had no idea the dude sitting behind me was copying my answers on the test. This happened to my best friend. Someone copied his answers and he got detention and the kid didn't. My friend has never gotten in trouble at school and the kid who copied was like 90% of the way to getting expelled. Oh I remember this one alright. T. Abel would hold 4 students and our table was ways loud. Not because of me. 15 meters. Mind you. It's not like I never got in trouble, but I liked this class a lot. I used to like the teacher as well, until he wanted to set an example. Everyone knew that, if this one other guy was made to leave class again, he would be in big trouble with the principal. The teacher visibly doubted sending him away but then shifted his example one chair to the left and sent me out instead. Didn't do nothing. Still hear them all laugh, because it was obviously crap. On a 4th grade math test we had to make a shape that had only 4 sides, 1 set of parallel lines, and only 1 right angle. There were probably more requirements, but I can't remember. I remember almost crying at my desk and spending 20 minutes on that one question, while constantly telling my teacher that it wasn't possible, but according to her it was. And the next day we went over the answer key, and the answer had 2 right angles. Yo I had something like this happen to me. We had a paper sheet with tons of math questions one of them was impossible and the whole class knew it. We went up to our teacher and she said no questions next day. We were reviewing it and she said it was impossible but still marked us all wrong. I've mentioned this before but when I was about 8 or 9 we had a big project in school which ended with us writing a story. I spent hours on this thing. It was going to be the best book ever. It was only a matter of time before it was snapped up by some publisher and then it would be the talk of the scholastic book fair, no doubt in my mind. It absolutely had to be in by the time school finished for Christmas, so my teacher could mark it over the break, so I stayed up until about 10 o'clock at night for about a week beforehand working on it which, you know, is the closest thing you get to an all-nighter when you're about 9. It was my magnum opus. I got back to school in January to find that. A. She had lost it. B. She was accusing me of not handing it in. And C. Because mine was the only one she couldn't find, she decided to call me out in front of the class about it. I ended up locking myself in the toilet because I was crying so much. Worst still, it later transpired that when it turned up after all, she marked it as though it was handed in late and the bish still only gave me a middling grade. Frick you, Mrs. Harding. Frick that teacher. In a similar vein, when I was 17, in high school, I was dreaming of becoming a published author one day. I had always enjoyed storytelling and I would always make a special effort to do well in school when it came to creative writing. 
At some point during the year, our professor asked us to write him a short story of about a thousand words. I was very excited, because I had tremendous respect for that man, and loved his classes. I really wanted to impress him. Wrote a Seafy short story, that involved an ice planetoid turned into a digging site for underground resources. Workers lived in stacked boxes apartments and traveled in. Spheres shooting through a network of large above ground tubes. The plot involved the protagonist uncovering an artificial structure under the ice, then being immediately fired and sent back to Earth in a single-person shuttle. It was strongly implied that the single-person shuttle was just a way to dispose of workers who knew too much about what the corporation was really digging for. Anyway, it wasn't very good, probably a little derivative. I did consume a lot of Seafy books, movies, games, etc., and nothing more than you'd expect from an average 17-year-old. But the professor handed it back to me without having even marked it, asking me to turn in another one on very short notice, this time without plagiarizing from some popular novel. I told him I didn't, asked what book he thought I plagiarized, because if a book told that story, I honestly wanted to read it, swearing the story was purely my own. I even admitted that I was likely influenced by a lot of things, but still came up with that one organically. He never heard my plea, never even named the book, or gave me more of a reason why he thought so poorly of my work. Lost a lot of respect for him, and a lot of interest in his classes after that. I'm still mad about it, and it's been over 20 years. A child in my child's class at school told their teacher that their mom was taking them out of school for the day of their birthday, and so they would be absent on that day. The teacher admonished the child and told them that if they weren't present the following day, that there would be hell to pay. The child was rightly upset and decided to go into school. They hadn't taken down their homework properly and so did three different pages of work. It was the wrong work. The teacher locked the child in the classroom over lunch on their birthday. I have a similar story. In 5th grade I had to get all my homework assignments signed by my parents in order to turn them in and get credit. On my birthday it snowed for the first time in 20 years in my town, but I forgot to get my homework signed the night before, probably because we went out for dinner or you know, birthday stuff. Anyways the teacher's aide didn't let me leave the classroom for lunch or recess while all the other kids went out and played in the snow. It was awful, but the worst part was my mom was a teacher at the school in the next wing down. I asked if I could go and get her signature to play in the snow with my friends and the teacher's aide said it wouldn't be appropriate. My mom was obviously upset about it, and I was devastated to not get to play in the rest no. So after school she took me and my brother up into the snow to play around and have a snowball fight. She turned my nightmare day into what was probably the most fun birthday I can remember from my early childhood. I have a pretty wonderful mom. I'm 35 now. When I was 14 or 15, my mom stormed into my room one evening and accused me of smashing a glass and getting rid of the evidence. It was one of these retro coke glasses. I swore I didn't break any glass, and if I did, why would I hide such a small accident? But my mom didn't believe me. She was so mad and accused me of lying. She wouldn't even say why I was her prime suspect. Somehow it just had to be me. Anyway, I got into trouble for it even without any evidence. Sometime later it turned out no glass was actually smashed. My mom thought the glasses she bought came in fours. But our neighbor bought the same set and there were actually three glasses in it. My mom acknowledged the fact but never apologized to me for how she screamed at me or how she accused me out of the blue. She just never mentioned it again. I'm still mad about it. Ugh, I'm not surprised you're still mad. You have every right to be. I have, on a couple of occasions, chewed out one of my children for something they didn't do. I've always made a point to go to them and say explicitly, I thought you did this thing and now I know that you didn't. I'm sorry for shouting at you for something I now know wasn't your doing. Quite apart from it simply being the right thing to do, apologizing for making a mistake keeps them fundamentally on side rather than them just thinking oh, that old fool is shouting again, whatever. I was probably 5 years old visiting my mom at the hospital after she gave birth to my brother and she was given food on a tray which she didn't want, so she gave it to me. 
I put the tray on the table, and as I was eating, the nurse takes the tray away from me, and throws away the food. That may have my first true instance of anger in my life. I'm 27 now, and I'm mad as I'm writing this haha. What a waste of food. If it's any consolation, where I work, we just talk family to go ahead and eat if the patient doesn't want it, infectious diseases aside of course. Yeah that's how it should be of course. The fact a nurse took food away from a child bothered me. It was a delicious piece of fried chicken too. My brother eating the remainder of my birthday cake behind my back a couple of years ago. After the celebrations I put what was left in the freezer to have some other time as a nice treat, birthday cake being a novelty. The fryker demolished every last bit of it. This wasn't just a little slice of cake left over, at least half of the cake remained until he got his mitts on it. Was absolutely fuming. Literally same. I baked a cake for mom's birthday a couple of years ago and specifically hid my cake, one slice of cake, that I made, because I loved baking, and liked tasting my own creations, and he saw the hidden cake, and deduced that it must have been hidden for him. So he'll ask no questions and simply eat the cake, since it must belong to him. Same thing happened to my leftover food this morning. I will always be mad, when people eat my food. I'd be tempted to lace the next Tupperware of leftovers with laxatives, or very hot peppers. In a 5th grade science test the question was, are there any stars in the solar system? I answered, yes. Teacher marked it wrong. I went up afterwards and said, what about the sun? He said, he meant that all the other stars are not in our solar system, and kept it marked wrong. Although I'm harboring this for 50 years now, he was all around one of the best teachers I ever had, and just passed away a week or so ago. But damn, that should have been marked right. Kindergarten. Playing with a kid in the sandbox was a fairly drizzly day. We are making a castle, and there's a puddle a few feet from us. He wants to dig a moat around the castle, and I say sure. So he just kinda jams his hand in the dirt and starts pulling, making way too huge of a channel, which he immediately realizes is going to just destroy our castle. So I say quick build a dam to stop the water. He freezes. Stares at me with wide eyes and mouth agape before running off. I think this is strange, but okay whatever I saved the castle, so I go back to digging, when the teacher runs up, and grabs me, and says to go to timeout, to which I obviously protest and say no wtf I didn't do anything. She then immediately says she knows I said a bad word and to not try and lie, to which I'm again confused, and say I did not. After a few back and forths of her trying to pull me away by the arm and me rather violently resisting, it occurs to her to actually ask what happened. I explain the story. I still remember her face kinda dropping, realizing the other little crap thought I said damn instead of damn, and then immediately ratting on me. Tries to say well maybe use a different word to which I again vehemently protest against, because no that is the correct word for such a situation and that's just how it works, and it's his fault for not knowing the word, etc, etc, until she finally gives in, and explains to the kid, that I did not swear, and that no one likes tattletales. I'm in my 30s, and on the other side of the country, and I still remember this as a very instance in which I gazed upon my fellow man and wept for he is stupid. This story is like an allegory for all of humanity. I love it. Do not look at the kid who basically didn't know a vocabulary word. Look at the teacher who agreed with you and scolded the kid. When I was in high school, I was occasionally allowed to drive my family's third car. It had a slow leak in one of the tires, so we were all supposed to check the pressure and put air in it if we needed to. I picked up a friend to go to a movie, and when we came out one tire was completely flat. It wasn't the one with the leak, so I put the spare on and drove home. I got absolute hell from my parents about it. How irresponsible I was to not check it, I'd have to pay for the repair, why didn't I call roadside assistance, etc. Took it to get fixed, repeat the whole lecture as we're dropping it off, and the tech who did it called my mom, and told her he'd found a nail in the tire and there was no way I could have seen it coming. She refused to apologize, and I still had to pay for it. That's not even bad parenting, that's just bad personing. Teachers never apologized for yelling at me and saying I know what you did because they confused me with someone else with the same name who did something bad, kicking some giant chess pieces over. 
In middle school, I had a test with some true slash false questions. One said something about the Atlantic Ocean and the West Coast, I'm in the US. There was some other stuff as well that was true about the Atlantic, but since the Atlantic is the East Coast, I marked it false. It was counted wrong. And when I protested the teacher said something along the lines of obviously I meant East Coast. It was only one point, and made no difference to my grade in the end, but my 13 year old usually quiet, teacher's pet self was ready to riot. I honestly wish she had. Reminds me of the time my machining teacher gave us all a test. Where one of the questions had three answers and none of the above. The problem is, that the one, that looked most correct had spelled course as course. Of course, we all ended up putting that down, because our minds kinda skipped the A, since everything else is the same, and we got it wrong. Practically the entire class. Thankfully, unlike the person you had teaching you, ours admitted that he figured that would happen, and if we answered either, that one or none of the above I think, actually, that one person caught it, then we'd get the point.